Welcome back to the channel guys. So on today's video, we're going to be taking care of yet another thing that the manufacturer should have taken care of from the factory. So we're gonna be working on my 2015 Mustang GT. For those of you that have driven one of these cars, you know that the factory short throw shifter can be quite infuriating sometimes. If you're just a casual driver that's using it for a daily driver, the shifter works perfectly fine. But as soon as you start getting into some more spirited driving, you've probably been locked out of gears before, had some issues with the shifter, and it really gets pretty annoying, especially when you're trying to really shift through the gears quickly, especially if you're doing any type of racing or anything. So for my understanding, the main thing that causes this is just hands down the shifter. And the reason for this, I don't know if you guys have seen them before, but it's basically just a long arm that comes off the top of the transmission and then you have your shift lever just kind of floating off of the back of the transmission. The problem with this is it doesn't really give you a very rigid connection to your transmission. So my understanding is that's what gives it a lot of the high RPM lockout and stuff like this. So the main thing that can be done to fix said problem is to go with an aftermarket shifter. There's many options out there. I'm not saying any of them are better than the others. Although I do think that the one I chose makes a very good product. What I ended up going with is the MGW X-Spec and it's the standard handle. It's almost the shortest throw that they possibly had. They did have the short, I don't remember exactly what it was called, but it's a shorter stick. So it's the absolute shortest throw you can possibly get in one of their shifters. This I believe is like a 20% reduction, which is already crazy. But so this is just the shifter portion. Everything they give you, I did already open this box, which is why it was unwrapped. Everything they give you, is so nicely bubble wrapped it's crazy they did an excellent job packaging and it's probably the best job i've seen they didn't need to even go all that out on it because a lot of these are pretty stout metal parts but they still did so really appreciate that i did end up going with one of their shift knobs you can get an adapter to use your factory shift knob but I wanted to end up going with something different this is a very nice weighted ball you can go with all different types of things I went with an aluminum cap but you can even go with a stainless steel cap they have all sorts of options to get the weight of your knob up as much as you could really want I think this one is close to a pound which sounds crazy but it, it's actually supposed to help quite a bit they give you all sorts of dynamat and everything like that to put on your shifter because since this is going to be a direct mount it will have a little more vibration than the factory shifter had from everything i've read though it's not that much so this is where kind of the real difference between the factory shifter and the mgw comes into place you can kind of see where your factory shifter would be it would be basically just this portion here but mgw utilizes these two arms here so those mount to the transmission and really give you that stout connection so you don't get that lockout, hopefully, which it's what I'm hoping. Realistically, I'm gonna end up having to do a clutch some point, but this should help a lot for now. So we're gonna get it installed and then we'll be taking it for a test drive, let you guys know what I think of it and hopefully help you make up your mind if you're on the fence about getting one of these. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and get your car raised up. I hope for your sake that some of you guys aren't peasants like me and hopefully you have a car lift. However, this video is gonna be based off of people that are peasants like me and only have jack stands and just regular floor jacks to work with. I do have these ramps here because I can't get a floor jack underneath the front of my car. These ramps are rated for like 13,000 pounds or something, so they're super nice. And then I went ahead and just threw jack stands under the rear. But you're going to definitely need something to get your car raised up off the ground because it's going to require you to get underneath there. There's at least a couple bolts that you got to reach up underneath the car to get in order to get that factory shifter out of there. So now we're going to come inside the car and start prepping things for getting the shifter out of here. First thing you're going to want to do is get your factory shift knob off. That is just going to twist right off of there. As you can see, it's threaded on. And then next we're going to remove these side panels here. You got one on either side of this center console. To get these off, I went ahead and slid my seat back as far as it would go. And then you just kind of grab in here, work your way around the edges, pull everything off. As you can see, just little plastic pressure clips that hold it in there. 
So we'll set that to the side. And you got two seven millimeter screws in here that you're going to be taking out next. That'll be the same for both sides. So we'll go ahead and pull all those out and then we'll get back to you guys with the next step. Now that we got both side panels off and the screws, you're gonna go ahead and open up the lid to your console here. And you're gonna take a plastic trim removal tool and then you're gonna pull back either edge. It's gonna take a little bit of effort. I had to put the camera down for a second, but you're gonna pop both of these edges free. And you can see the front here is already starting to lift up. It's pretty difficult to do with one hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up with both hands and I'll show you guys what we're working with underneath there. All right, we got this center console freed up enough. So now you can see underneath here, my car has two plugs because it's a premium. So it's got the my color and then it also has the sensor for your key being as there keyless starts just the push the button ones you've got to have your key close enough to that sensor there for the car to actually start so just keep that in mind when you put this back together if you don't unplug that sensor you're not gonna have a good time getting your car to start again and the next thing you're gonna want to do is come up here I already got this loose but you're gonna want to you can see just more clips that hold that in you're gonna want to pull that out of the center console and then you can set the entire thing to the side this whole boot won't come off yet because as you can see this being the s550 it's got the reverse lockout deal there so we're gonna have to get that off before we can actually get this entire boot off of there so how you guys are gonna get this thing off I already got it loose here but you can see there's these white tabs here you're gonna bend each of those back don't do what I did and bend that one too far back because I just broke it off but you're gonna bend those back and then you'll be able to get this whole shift boot assembly off. I just used a little screwdriver and went to town a little too hard on that one and tore it up. But that's gonna be the next step, guys. All right, so the next thing we're gonna be doing here is to remove the reverse lockout on the shifter. So to do that, we'll pull off, you got this white plastic O-ring and then you got a rubber O-ring underneath it. Go ahead and take those off, set those out of the way. Then right here on the back side, you got a roll pin. I think I mentioned earlier in the video, but MGW does supply you with the punch for this. So we'll just go ahead and use that and knock this pin out of the shifter. I'm just gonna take that with a small hammer. Help if I get the thing pointed forward all the way. The punch that MGW sent is kind of tapered, as you can see, so it doesn't go all the way in there. It only knocks the pin out probably a little over halfway. So to get it out the rest of the way, you can either grab another punch if you've got some punches laying around. Else just grab a pair of vice grips carefully pull the thing out of there make sure as you're pulling you don't slam the your pliers or vice grip whatever right into your infotainment screen that would be a pretty bad day the spring really isn't coiled up that much so you don't have to worry about it flying when you get that pin out of there but now that that's out you can pull off your lockout spring assembly Now we're down to just the boot. Since we're already in here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this insulation. It's got to come off. It's kind of just, there's some sticky tape there at the front, but, and save that because you will be needing it later. Now we're gonna go ahead and get this shift boot off of here. It's basically just kind of held on there with almost a zip tie, as you can see. So we'll just toss that out of the way. And then you can go ahead and work it out of there. Then we're gonna have to take out this little guy here. It looks like maybe a T20, I'm not quite sure. 
but that'll have to come off of there. So we got out the little screw, see it there, it went in the side of the shifter. We'll go ahead and set that to the side so we don't lose it, and then you can take off the rest of that. I don't know that we're actually reusing any of that lockout assembly, so it probably doesn't matter too much. But anyway, there it is all stripped down. So at this point we're done inside the car. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is prepare yourself for going under the car. Like I said, I've already raised my car up to where I can get underneath it. If you haven't, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do that. Then you're gonna to wanna to bring with you a couple extensions, 10 millimeter socket, your 3 8 ratchet, and a six millimeter socket. Make sure that 10 millimeter socket is a deep well as well. I don't know for sure that I'm gonna need both of those extensions, but I'm bringing them just in case. All right, guys, we're underneath the car here. So right there is the drive shaft. This is basically directly behind the transmission. And if you look up there, hold the camera. It's basically right up there is the rear mounting bracket for the shifter. So you got a 10 millimeter bolt there and then one on the other side. We're gonna go ahead and drop those down real quick with our ratchet and deep socket. All right guys, it's at this point that everybody seems to have issues with this whole installation. And if you come over here, right side of the drive shaft, oh, come on, this is gonna maybe focus. So you can see where I got my wrench stuck up there. There's a 10 millimeter bolt that you really can't see. You just have to kind of go by feel, but it's right back in there. And I can't break it loose with even just this 10 millimeter. I used a ratcheting wrench, which is what you guys are gonna wanna use for sure. But you're essentially gonna wanna take that 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench and then grab another wrench, use it on your open end side, like a makeshift kind of breaker bar, and that should get it loose. I really wish I could show this to you guys. However, with not having a lift, it really makes things really complicated. I am having a horrible time getting a camera up there because I'm basically laying on my back with my hands just kind of barely enough room to move around there. So depending on what you guys are working with, they say you could possibly have to remove your exhaust, drop your transmission a little bit, to the back end anyway. I think I'm going to be able to get it just how it is now, but I also don't have as big of arms and hands as some people that I've seen try to do this. So hopefully I'll be able to make it work. If you guys are not able to, that's probably what you're going to have to do is drop the rear transmission to get yourself a little extra arm room in there. But aside from that, it's really just going to be all by feel getting a wrench up in there. It's pretty hard to actually see that bolt. Now, if you guys want to get the shifter out without having to take out your exhaust and drive shaft, you can see there's 10 millimeter bolts on that side. And then, well, I can't really get to it, but maybe. Same thing on the other side anyway. So we got to move to this side right now. We'll get those two out on this side, then move it over to the other side of the drive shaft and we'll get the other two out and that'll split it apart so we can take it out in two pieces rather than taking apart all the exhaust and drive shaft. All right, so I finally got this thing out of the car. That was probably one of the most miserable things I have ever done in my entire life. Spent about two hours laying underneath the car just trying to get two bolts out one of which was that 10 millimeter bolt, which by the way, you do have to undo your rear transmission mount so that way that thing can come down because otherwise the trans tunnel is so tight up against there that you cannot get this bolt out of there and you're never gonna get this factory shifter out of the car. So you have to drop that down that way you can pull down on the transmission and get that to slide out of there. So that's the first thing. That's where that's gonna be mounted in there. You will be keeping this bolt so you get to go through it again, putting it back in there. Then aside from that, you can see this is obviously the part that's sticking up into the car. So when you're laying underneath your car, or if you're fortunate enough to have a lift, this is what you're going to see from the underside. So unless you want to take out your exhaust and your drive shaft, you're going to have to take this shifter apart in order to get it out of the car. I already lost one bolt here, but there are four 10 millimeter bolts. So basically you'll be taking all four of those bolts out, moving this to either side of the drive shaft so that you can get, because it basically sits kind of centered over the drive shaft. So you got to kind of move it to either side in order to actually get a tool on it. 
And the other thing is too, once you get this long 10 millimeter bolt out, that's the one that's a big pain that I couldn't really show you guys in the video where it was at, you're gonna to wanna to kind of swing this arm up out of the way and that's gonna give you, there's the channel that rides in the transmission. And then once you pull it out of there, it'll give you some more flexibility with this so you can move it around a bit better. Anyway, so after you get done with that, get these four bolts out of here, you'll pull off this factory rubber boot. And I've already got mine apart, obviously, but it is kind of stuck together with a rubber gasket. What I found worked is to grab onto this shaft right here and kind of pull down and it pops this right off of there. Then this whole thing is gonna drop out. It will not be able to come off yet because it's still going to be held on by this bolt right here, which goes right into the shaft that goes directly into your transmission and is what you shift all your gears with. So that'll still be attached. You're gonna come over to here. You can see inside this housing, you've got two more 10 millimeter bolts for a retaining plate in here. You'll just undo both of those. And that whole thing will just fall right out, out of the car. And that wasn't supposed to happen yet, I was gonna Mine's loose. But anyway, so that's what you're gonna be left with. I went back up into the actual car and just pushed down on that because I was trying to pull it out from the outside, but as you can see, it's kind of narrower there. And then this cylinder part fits perfectly through that hole. So you have to get it kind of straight up and down and then you just kind of push it down through there. The whole thing is going to drop out and then you'll be able to remove that from the under the side of the car. Then after that, you can kind of take this and twist it and push it up through the hole in your transmission tunnel and remove it from the inside of the car. Once you get done with that, you'll have this 13 millimeter bolt here, which is a very kind of interesting bolt. You can get to it. I ended up using just a 3 8 ratchet, 13 millimeter shallow socket. Got it loose, no problem, but you can kind of see there, it almost acts as kind of a pin going into that shifter shaft that goes into your transmission. So once you get it loose, I ended up having to kind of use like a pry bar and kind of work it its way up and to get it out of there. And you will be reusing this one as well. That'll be going into your new MGW shifter. So you want to hang on to that and then this other long 10 millimeter bolt. From what I understand, you won't be utilizing any of the other bolts. But anyway, once that's out, it'll just slide right off of that shaft and then you can remove that from the car as well. So to get started putting the new shifter in, first thing you're gonna do is take this new MGW piece and you guys have probably kind of guessed by now how that's gonna work. So this one that has the bolt that I was talking about, it's basically gonna be the same as that, just a little different shape. So that bolt I told you to keep that's kind of a pin, it's going to go in here. So we'll go ahead and take that, take this bolt here, some of the supplied Loctite that MGW gives you, and we'll put some of that around the threads, and then we'll go ahead and put this back in the car. So to get that 13 millimeter bolt and that arm back in there, I'm actually going in through the top of the trans tunnel. You can most certainly go through the bottom, it's up to you. This thing is just as much of a pain putting back in as it was getting out. It's super tight tolerances, so you really gotta kinda push down on it. Next thing we're gonna do is take this piece from MGW, they call it a bridge. We're going to take out these bolts here. And they're gonna have you put Loctite on them. Take them for those, grab the Loctite. some on the thread ends there. We're also gonna take the bolts out of these arms here. Put Loctite on those as well. Now we're gonna take some of this Dynamat that they supply. We'll cut a piece, fit across the top of the bridge here. I'm guessing it's because of kind of the vibration like I was talking about before. Not quite sure exactly how this sits in the car just yet. 
or what it might be potentially touching, so that might be having something to do with it as well. But either way, go ahead and cut out a strip of that. Put it on the top of here. So now we got all that done, next step is going to be to put this bridge back into the car. So much like the factory shifter was, except we got these two arms that come down now. So we went ahead and put Loctite on this 10 millimeter bolt. That's going to be the next step is getting this set up inside there and then putting that in. And it's going to be where you're gonna to have to pull down on the drive shaft again and pull the transmission down in order to get that bolt up on the side there just because of how tight of a fit it is. Now that we got the bridge in the car and got that one 10 millimeter bolt tight and we're not fully done with it, we will still have those two clamp arms that came down to finish installing, but the next step is going to be to prep and install this main shifter body. So we got another bolt here. That one's also gonna need some Loctite. We'll go ahead and back that out. You'll notice the other two bolts that we had that I pulled out and put Loctite on look kind of the same, but they're a little longer, as you can see. So just make sure you don't get those mixed up. This shorter one is gonna be the one that goes in this lower part, and those other two, I believe, are gonna go through here, or end up going through there anyway. Not 100% sure. Yeah, I'm guessing it's gonna go something like that. We'll see. They tell you also to go ahead and take the rest of this Dynamat and put it on the bottom of this shifter. So we'll go ahead and do that as well. do give you extra so we still don't fully need all of this. Now though we're going to go and take this and go ahead and bring it over to the car and go ahead and put it in. We'll drop this in from the top. Fortunately MGW the older ones I believe you had to put in from the bottom of the car or else disassemble but these newer ones that they've got I think it was after 2015 I want to say they and just drop right in through the top of the trans tunnel, which is super nice. So inside the car, we'll go ahead and tilt this down into the trans tunnel. Okay, there we go. And you can kind of see we got one shaft there, the other one's just below it. That's where this assembly will be sliding onto so possibly I don't know if I'll be able to get it from this angle okay it's just a little difficult to do with one hand of course but there we go so that slid on there and then to get to the bolts to actually attach it we're gonna have to go back underneath the car so we got the new shifter fully mounted you can see the three bolts there that go into the two shafts that come off of the transmission and that bracket that we've got. So you don't want to fully tighten those yet. They're half inch or 13 millimeter. I think they're closer to a half inch. I think MGW uses uh, standard size stuff with their hardware, but go ahead and just kind of snug those up and then we're gonna move on to the next step. So the next thing we have to do is take these arms and you can see that factory point right there on the transmission. That is where this arm is going to clamp to. So in order to do that, we're gonna have to kind of loosen up the sides on there. That's just your 13 millimeter. Loosen that up, back those off a little bit, and then slip it over there, and then we'll tighten these clamps. And we'll be doing that on both sides. So once you've got all those bolts kind of snugged up, you're gonna go ahead and remount your transmission cross member. Get that fully tightened up. And then from there, 
we're gonna go in and go in and tighten the strut arms. You're gonna take off the lock nut on each of the arms. If we can get this to focus here. Take off the lock nut on each of the arms, tighten the bottom bolt, and then run in that lock nut on top. That way the bottom nut can't rattle off. And then we're also gonna come up here and fully tighten all three of those bolts. And once that's done, we will have this thing fully mounted and ready to go. So the final thing we have to do before we lower the car is to take this heat shield that they give you and that's gonna go on the bottom of the shifter underneath the car. So we're gonna slap that on real quick and I'll show you what it'll look like when we're done. So we got the heat shield on. You guys can see how it goes just over that main shifter assembly. Just kind of wraps around there on either side. And now we are done underneath the vehicle. Before you do lower it down, just make sure and double check yourself, make sure all the bolts are tight. Especially make sure these transmission cross member bolts are tight, pretty important things. So once you get all that done, you can go ahead and lower the car back down. Next thing we're going to do is we're gonna take this factory shift boot. We gotta get this thing off right here cause we're no longer using the factory reverse lockout method. Now it's gonna be like the S197s where you push down and over to the left top left for reverse. So you'll turn your boot inside out and you can see here, you wanna cut right underneath that higher portion of the plastic and you wanna do it from the inside. You don't wanna cut this leather at all cause that's gonna, it'll ruin that shift boot. So the way I'm doing it is just taking a hacksaw here and I'll just carefully cut that down. I may have a hard time holding it, but we'll see. Seems like if you grind and grab it from the inside here and grab onto that piece right there, might be able to get a hold of it enough. Yeah, that should work good. So there's the piece we cut off. You can kind of see how that worked. And now this part just kind of slips off of there. That old piece comes out. And not sure if that detaches or not. Might be supposed to stay there, I'm, I'm not sure. So my understanding is you'll be leaving this plastic ring portion that's left on there. So it'll be like that. You still gotta have some something to support around the neck of that boot cover. Then they give you this grommet here. It's the one titled base interior boot insert. So we'll take that. And that's gonna go basically inside of that plastic ring. It's pretty crazy how they came up with all, or designed all this stuff. It works really, really good. Just make sure that you, when you initially go to make your cut on that plastic, that you actually cut the right stuff and don't cut into your leather. Don't cut off too much plastic. Where I cut it is right where you want to cut it and it'll be perfect. As you can see, it'll go just like that. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do, we're gonna take this new rubber boot here that they supply, and that's gonna go into the car. You can see here around the edge, there is a lip. So that's what's going to be going around this metal lip here on the inside of the car. So we'll go ahead and slip that on there. They tell you to use some silicone spray if you need to, to get the boot around this shifter arm. It's covered in some, I think they said wax or something, so that way it helps it install a little easier. But if you have issues, you can use some silicone spray. I very well might, we'll see how this goes. But either way, I'm gonna have to use two hands for sure because I can't exert enough force on it as it is. So once I get that installed, I'll let you guys know how it went. All right, so that wasn't bad at all. It just needed two hands. I didn't use any spray or anything like that. It went on there quite nicely. 
they say that you want to have the neck of this down below that bolt there and then of course make sure that it is in the groove all the way around and you're good to go i know it looks really dirty but like i was saying that's just that wax coating that they put on it once you've got your boot all positioned you'll take the zip tie they provide you with and you'll put it around the neck of this and that'll keep that thing on there nice and tight and then we'll go ahead and cut it off flush next you're going to want to take your leather boot cover put it on there and you're just going to kind of want to set it into place we're not doing the final install on it yet what we're doing is we're going to see if we need spacers for this shift knob depending on how low it sits and they supply you with them just got to see how far down this knob goes it seems like that's going to be about it and as you can see there there is quite a bit of a gap i don't know if you guys can see that so they give us washers there looks like we'll probably need at least two of them so we'll take this knob back off and test fit it again that's what you guys are going to want to do and those washers are going to go from the inside of the boot they're going to stack underneath there that way you don't have a big pile of rubber stacking up now the final thing we're going to do before we reinstall the center console mgw gives you this sound deadener some nice sound deadening material in between a couple pieces of foam you're going to put that on here first there is slits in the back so you know which side goes toward these bolt holes that were here you'll just slip that over the top of those and then we'll take our factory material we'll reinstall that over the top of it when you put this center console cover back in just make sure that you do get both of your plugs back into the bottom of this or else like i was saying before the car's not going to start and not going to be a good time or else your mic hauler stuff won't work so get both of those plugged back in and then this whole thing just snaps back in place so i mentioned before to you guys that i got an actual shift ball from mgw and the reason why i would recommend going with them i don't know if all aftermarket shift balls are like this i know the factory one sure wasn't but they got this set screw here on the back which makes it nice because you can get it perfectly straight that way and you don't have to over tighten things in order to get it wrapped back around and you just take that set screw and tighten it up and then you're good to go just like that it doesn't turn at all now i promise we are really almost done all you got to do now is take your little seven millimeter screws that you pulled out on each side panel put those side panels back on and we're officially done well there is the finished product guys this thing does have ridiculously short gates it's going to be really interesting to drive it and see what it actually does if you guys are interested in seeing that video when I do go to test this thing out, or if you have any questions on the install that I didn't cover, I know a lot of the footage was not the greatest, but it was really all we could do with what we had to work with. And other than that, we'll catch you guys in the next video.